nothing is more important than being a software engineer than what your desk setup looks like. Nah, I'm just kidding. So just a disclaimer before I start, by no means do I think it's necessary to have any sort of those fancy desk setups we see on YouTube everywhere to make a career out of this. All you need is literally a semi-decent laptop and your brain. Oh well, and the motivation to learn, but that's about it, I promise. That being said, I think you're more likely to produce better and more creative work if you reduce the frictions in your environment and work in a place where you like and feel comfortable in. And in this video, I wanna share with you my creativity slash productivity that setup that I've developed this year for myself. I've divided this video into categories and I've added timestamps in the description. So feel free to skip to whichever sections you wanna watch or you care about watching the most. Without further ado, let's get right into it. This is probably the most important part of your setup because this is literally the brains of the operation that makes everything possible. My choice for the brains of the operation is the 16 inch MacBook Pro and mine's highly spec'd out with eight cores, ninth generation processor, 32 gigabytes of RAM and one terabyte of SSD storage. And yes, as you would imagine, it's super fast and performs really well. It supports me during my work and my long software engineering hours and well, for editing 4K footage without wanting to blow my brains out. You probably though don't need these kind of high specs for your every day to day software engineering stuff, but it's a nice to have, especially if you're editing a lot like myself. And when it comes to operating systems, I've tried many operating systems and nothing has stuck with me quite as much as OSX has. I absolutely love the user experience. I've worked with Ubuntu for a very long time and I finally made the switch to OSX this year and I couldn't be happier about that decision. I've also tried Windows back in the day for like a month or so, but pff, let's not even go there. I feel like having a standing desk nowadays has become the norm and having a sitting desk is like so yesterday. <laughs> it's honestly very cool to be able to stand more often during the day, especially that now I can even rationalize to myself that those five extra cookies I ate today definitely got burnt off in the 45 minutes I spent standing after lunch. So for my choice of a standing desk, I went for the IKEA Rodolf sit and standing desk. I decided that I wanted to go for the 1.4 meters wide one or 4.6 for my American friends. I appreciate nothing more than the amount of space I have now. I've definitely notice that as I grow older the bigger that I want my desk to be. Maybe it's a getting old thing. Anyways, it's definitely way better to stand than sit all day long because it's really good for your posture and according to a study I read earlier you burn about 8 calories more standing than you do sitting. And even though this doesn't sound like much, this difference can add up. So it's something to think about. I can't stress enough how important it is to not cheap out in this area. Your pockets might thank you for the short term if you do, but your eyes will pay dividends on the long run. I went with the Samsung 32 curved inch heavenly piece of a monitor, and I don't regret it one bit. It's got a refresh rate of 144Hz, making it very smooth and easy for the eyes. And on top of that, this curvature is exactly what your eyes are asking for. Essentially, the curvature of the monitors is supposed to allow your eyes to take in everything at once without strain. Which isn't really the case with flat monitors, especially the really big ones, because if the screen exceeds your natural field of vision, it can cause eye strain. But I'm no doctor, so don't quote me on that. I've noticed the trend is that a lot of software engineers usually have dual displays in their setups. But I'm not really a huge fan, because I feel it's kind of a too much for me. I find it a bit distracting to have to look at two places when working a problem. However, I usually have my laptop opened up as my own version of what a dual display could be. But I don't really use my laptop screen that often. I usually just work and edit off my bigger screen and keep the laptop display for things like Spotify or Slack. I absolutely love this. This is the Amazon Basics desk mount with two mount arms. I mounted to it both my screen and my laptop because I wanted to have them both lifted off my desk. And it totally improved my, the quality of my working experience. Even though I don't really use the space under my screen for anything except for my speakers, it still gives me the feeling of expanded space, which helps me reduce my brain clutter. Spoken like a true minimalist, I know. I have this desk mount attached to the edge of my desk and it's surprisingly super sturdy, which I wasn't sure it would be and this was a concern of mine before purchasing it. Out of the box, it comes with two of these long mount arms but i shortened the arm for my monitor as using the long arm made it seem too close to my eyes and a bit far off from the edge of the desk however i did go for the long arm with a laptop because i really like to be able to move my laptop around as i go through my day and as you can see the movement is super silky and smooth for my keyboard choice i'm using the white apple magic keyboard it's simple and I really like it. It's very minimalistic and it doesn't take up too much space. It also doesn't make much sound, which compared to the other mechanical one I had prior, actually wait, let me show you. 
I even forgot it's wired. Ugh. But I can't say it's not nice. The feeling of typing on a mechanical keyboard is so soothing and satisfying. And I really like this one, which is the Red Dragon K552. But it's too damn noisy. And if I want to keep on cohabitating with another human being and stay in one piece, then the Apple Magic Keyboard it is. Well, as you can see here, I'm using both, the MX Master 3 and the Apple Magic Trackpad. You might be wondering, do I really need both or am I just trying to join the ranks of the bougie software engineers? Well, of course I need both mice. And I don't want to join the ranks of the bougie software engineers. I really like to navigate the cursor on my screen through a traditional mouse, and I'm not really a fan of using the trackpad for that. I feel like it kind of slows me down and really makes a difference in my productivity. I don't really know why actually, I guess it's just a matter of habit. But on the other hand, the new Magic Trackpad gestures and its smooth scrolling is absolutely an experience in of itself. It's so smooth and elegant, it's almost a crime not to own one of these, especially if you're an Apple b like myself. This is probably the area that I spend the least on and probably for good reasons. I just bought these cheap creative speakers which are quite okay sound quality wise, but nothing impressive really. They look quite nice though and come in black, which is a major plus in my book. The reason why I invested so little in this area is because by the time I got to the audio part of my setup, I had already broken the bank. But I don't really care for one main reason, which is that I often use my Sony headphones instead, which I bought back when I was traveling quite often. And that's because they've got really good noise cancelling feature and they have really crisp audio, making it super suitable for airplanes and trains. But well, since that travel aspect no longer exists and a pandemic happened and the chances of the world ending is growing day after day along with my elevating levels of anxiety and depression i just use it for work nowadays but it's all fine this was a very difficult choice for me to make but i was recommended the q9 microphone by a friend and it's super cool for two main reasons reason number one is that it looks dope as f and it makes me look like a professional podcaster which i'm not not yet at least anyways reason number two is that it's attached to my desk and moves quite conveniently to be wherever i want it to be it folds easily and it doesn't take up too much space and when it comes to the audio quality it's actually quite good so stamp of approval from me For the chair, I'm using what seems to be a standard for a lot of folks. It's the IKEA Jarf Jalit chair, or at least that's how it's written. Just for fun, I've looked up how to pronounce the chair's name properly. So let's try that out. Jarf Jalit. Jarf Jalit. One more time. Jarf Jalit. Jarf Jalit. I'm pretty sure I butchered this, but I apologize for all my Swedish friends. I believe it's the perfect chair for the budget range it falls in. It's got some cool features, for example, the wheels lock when no one is sitting on the chair, which is quite useful so that the chair doesn't slide away when I stand up. It also allows me to sway and lock in many positions, which is super nice, especially at the end of the day when I just want to relax and recline back in my chair while pushing through those last hours of the day. It's also got adjustable both, the back thingy and the neck thingy, I don't really know what they're called, but you get the idea. This chair also definitely has my stamp of approval, especially if you're on a budget. So when it comes to cable management, you have to consider three main things. I can't do this. I've got absolutely nothing when it comes to cable management. This is the source of my shame. This looks absolutely horrendous. I realize that. And at the moment, I do not have any ideas on what to do about this. So if you've got any ideas on how to fix this, then please leave a comment with your suggestion and I'll make a video comparing the ideas that I get and hopefully, just hopefully, I'll be able to surgically beautify this mess. That being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.